Alright, welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be making a spline cutting jig for the table saw. So if you have a similar table saw to me where the fence is made up from a piece of aluminium extrusion, in America a lot of their table saw fences have a piece of kind of hard plastic on either side and it's very much rectangular which is very easy to create a jig on because you just need to have two pieces of wood either side and then a top. But with this aluminium extrusion it's going to be very difficult to create a jig to you know house around that. So quite simply uh, the best thing to do would be to take off the, the main fence and then you can create your jig to go around the fence bar itself and now this is already square to the blade and the table so all I need to do is create a housing around that and it can slide on this. Now obviously you do need to remove this bar that holds the fence in place but yeah I'd recommend taking the fence off and then you've got a very nice square kind of tube to work with. Okay, so to bring you up to speed, I've screwed everything together and it's pretty much functional right now. Now, because this is a shop project, I don't mind leaving it, you know, just looking quite boring. Now, if you were to make one for yourself, you could paint it. You could add handles on it if you feel like you want to grab something. But uh, I'm fine with holding this side wall and the support at the back and pushing it through the saw like that. What I didn't show on video is uh, to get this wall level with the table, I had to add some shims on uh, the underside so as you can see here on this piece of plywood I just glued some veneer down and on this side I glued some thin flexi ply down which is a bit thicker than the veneer which uh, allowed me to level it. Now obviously it doesn't need to be neat it is just a shop jig but it's functional and that's the main thing and I'll show you exactly how it works. If you're making picture frames and you're mitering the corners, it's a very good idea to add splines in the corners and it adds a lot of strength because at the moment it's basically just an end grain joint. If you put your picture frames on its side and then run that over the saw blade, you're going to then create a saw kerf in the middle of that mitre and then you can glue in a spline in that gap and it really stiffens up that corner and makes a very strong joint. That's how you secure it, you just attach a picture frame on this wall add a couple of uh, squeezy clamps or any clamps and then you just feed it over the blade like that. You may be wondering why I made these walls come out so far if I'm just making pitch frames. The reason I've done that is quite often if you're making boxes you can mitre the boxes and add splines there. So if I wanted to make a set of jewellery boxes or just one to be honest I can put the box on its side I can run it through and then move the fence again to make another saw kerf so then I can get splines all the way down the side of a box and they also look very decorative I did want to make this jig a two-in-one jig so I wouldn't need to make a one for boxes and one for pitch frames so I just extended that out further
So it's been a few days since I've made this jig and there are a couple of alterations that you could do. So far to prevent chip out, I'm putting masking tape on the corner where I'm cutting the spline. Now, whether you have a zero clearance board behind it, that's still a very good idea to add masking tape, but I'm just relying on the masking tape. So it might be a good idea if you carry on these walls down to the bottom of the table, so then you've got a bit of supporting material behind whatever you're cutting to prevent the chip out. But the main reason I made this spline cutting jig was for this project which will be out on Saturday. It's an inlaid picture frame. I am absolutely thrilled with how this has come out. It may look like quite a simple build, but there's a lot going on. All these walls angle in very slightly. You don't notice that at first, but it creates a very nice effect. Kind of be looking into if there was a picture in here or if it was a mirror. It's kind of angling towards the picture, which is very nice. It's got splines in the corners, obviously. I've used Paduke and Ripple Maple, which as you can see, hopefully the camera's picking up, is this lovely figured wood. So that will be out on Sasso, that's going to be a very detailed build on every single step on how to make it. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Turn on notifications. Yeah. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so you get notified as soon as I upload that video. I want to thank my patrons for continuously supporting the channel and enabling me to upload two new videos every week. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you've got any questions or you just want to chat, comment down below. If you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you on Saturday for the pitch frame build.